And the agony of defeat. This is ABC's Wide World of Sports. On the floor, stolen. Turnover caused by Robertson and stolen right back. Great help by Robertson. Running jumper, not there. The follow won't go. One year ago, Kansas beat UMass in a heart stopper. The rematch is next. Despite Mother Nature's efforts, the Kansas Jayhawks have found their way to Amherst, Massachusetts and to the Mullen Center for the first time in school history as they get set to dip it off against the Minutemen of UMass right here on ABC. Hi again, everybody. Mike Goldberg joined by John Mangelt. And John, you know what? Roy Williams just told us he knows his Kansas team is like an antibiotic to their opponents. If you can take them, all your ailments will be cured. Well, Coach Bruiser Flint hopes that's just the medicine for his struggling UMass team so far this year that maybe a victory here can catapult him into the second half of the season. And, you know, Kansas could be the cure here today. Well, Kansas certainly comes in with a good feeling for today's game against a team led by Bruiser Split, which has struggled a bit, but Kansas had struggles getting here with their travel schedule. Yeah, well, we all did 12-hour trips to get here. They practiced in Philadelphia, bust down, you know, Roy's going to have to keep them real focused. It's not a huge game for them. So he'll have to keep them focused in the beginning, keep this crowd out of it. Well, as you take a look at our starting lineup today, brought to you by Toyota, you'll notice the matchup in the middle will be one that we will be highlighting all afternoon long. The seven-footer, Eric Chenoweth, against the big man for UMass, who has struggled a bit in Larry Kettner. Right, he's a little foul prone, so it'll be interesting to see if Chenoweth takes him down low. Kettner has to get a little more confidence. I think bring Chenoweth outside, Hit that first jumper, and he'll be okay. Gregory has come into the lineup for Kansas and played very well until recently and struggled a bit. This is the fourth meeting in six years between these two schools, and Kansas has won all three meetings so far. The one last year was a very close matchup with UMass almost ending the home winning streak, which came to an end this year at Allen Fieldhouse in Lawrence, Kansas, at the hands of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Jam-packed Mullen Center today. Despite the weather, the crowd is ready for this contest. Right, and the crowd is not quite here yet because it's like a skating rink outside, but one of the things that'll be interesting to watch, Kansas will want to make this an 80, high 80s game. On the other hand, UMass wants to make it a 60s game. Now, if you look at Kansas, they can win in the 60s. They've done it quite often uh, this year already five or six times but they'll want to push it up umass will want to take the air out of it make kansas play half court defense run them through screen so execution on the part of umass's offense is very important now well, kansas playing out of conference again here in january they have had good success going away from the conference schedule in the big 12 in the month of january as you saw the defeat of UConn one year ago, this will be the final non-conference game of the season for Kansas. Chenoweth, the seven-footer, taps it back to the freshman Jeff Bochy. Kansas in the road uniforms in the blue, the Minutemen in the home white. Bochy coming off a great game against Missouri. He really stepped up for three-pointers. Bradford works it to the outside. Three on the way, and Bochy starts the way he finished a couple of nights ago. Very nice. He took that right off the screen, went straight up. Extremely confident for a freshman. First freshman starting point guard since Shock Vaughn for the Kansas Jayhawks. Fable, a defensive specialist for the Minutemen. Good matchup out front. Clark's going to have to penetrate her. He's going to have to make things happen. Break down Bushy. Underneath the whistle, and the basketball will belong to Kansas. Robertson a bit shaken up away from the basketball. I didn't see it blocked out by the official. May have taken a, an elbow or something. Tough screens. I know Bruiser Flint's asking his club to set tough screens, but once your offensive players do, that screener cannot move. They're going to call the foul on Chris Kirkland away from the ball. That's the first foul of the basketball game. Kansas coming off an impressive showing against Missouri. Their first win in a number of years at the Hearn Center in Columbia. Chenoweth on the floor, up high. 
And again, there's a push underneath. He's got four or five inches on Kendner down low. They're going to try to bust it down there, make the defense collapse, come back out for the jump shots. That's the way uh, you can get the better, clearer, open jumper. Go down low, then come back out. Kenny Gregory off the basketball a moment ago. Monty Mack. Clark and Babel up top. There's Kentner from the foul line. Soft touch and it goes. Nice screen from Kirkland down low. The two big guys on an exchange. Kansas is going to have to switch that. Talk about an opportunity to cure your ailment. Kentner hoping to do that today. Pass too far for Chenoweth turned over. Good idea. Not very good execution. UMass had talked early in the season about if they could shoot well from the perimeter, this being a team that could go very deep into the NCAA tournament. They're just 6-8 and eight on the season. That's Mack walked walk. with the basketball. Yeah. And again, good screen down low. That time by Kentner for Mack coming off the screen, tried to penetrate, just lost control of the ball, a turnover. Bochi. Very impressive, as you said, against Missouri. 15 points. Perfect from outside the three-point arc at four for four. Perhaps his best game of his Kansas career. Gregory to Chenoweth. Bumped. Continues to battle underneath and gets his first field goal. Very nice pick and roll. Didn't succeed on the initial, but got his own rebound. Put it back up. Wide open look for UMass. Chris Kirkland is able to make our score 5-4. Nice job by Clark. Not a fast break, but kind of a semi-break. Penetrated, got the open jumper. Seniors Robertson, he turns it over. Mack all the way down. That was just an ugly pass. I mean, that was to nobody, but right to Clark. Gregory. And a pushing foul underneath against the Minutemen. Now, one of the things that UMass has to be very careful the time before, they came down with kind of a semi-break. That time, they got on a turnover and broke. But that's the kind of game Kansas wants to get into. They want to get uh, UMass's adrenaline pump, get them running up and down the floor, because they know they can have the advantage in that type of ball game. Kettner foul Bradford. Nick a junior from Fayetteville, Arkansas. 64% uh, free throw shooter. Kansas is a team not much better, 65, but way better than UMass, who's really struggled from the line at 58. Been a real nemesis for them this year. Bradford has shown his versatility all season long with T.J. Pugh banged up. Quite often, he has had to play out of position at the power forward spot. In transition the made free throw Monty Mack got behind the Kansas defense and a three second violation called against the Jayhawk called against Robertson that's I don't know if that's a guy you want to get caught down in the paint trying to post up on a three second call UMass coming off one of their better shooting nights of the season they've not missed a field goal yet so far Kentner strong. Offensive rebound back and in. Kirkland. Good confidence, strong move by Kentner. Good movement by UMass. Got him. Kirkland the avenue for the offensive rebound. 10 6 UMass. Good job. Don't need quick shots when other teams are running it up on you. From the outside. Yes. Three point field goal by Monty Mack. Just what Kansas did not want. Yeah. UMass to get the crowd in. Yeah. Very important that UMass got off very quickly. And of course, Kansas, as we said, you know, struggled to get here. Bochi, tough shot. Yeah. UMass on a 7-0 run. Yeah, Roy may need a timeout to calm things down a little bit. It's always, I think it's good to have a timeout. You don't want to save them till the end. Clark. Finally, the Minutemen miss a yeah, shot. Not a good shot, really. I mean, you, you really want to keep it on Kansas when you got it going. Robertson himself, the senior. 
Clark uh, under 40% from the field. UMass doesn't have the fast break. They really want to make Kansas run, uh, run through some screens and play some defense and don't take quick one-on-one -on -one shots. Kirkland. UMass a good start with their shooting. Fable spins it inside. Kentner over the seven-footer and he gets the roll. Kentner known to play big in big games. Of course, none bigger for UMass this year than this one. And Coming out very confident. And he had struggled, John, as UMass has, and that's been one of the problems for Kentner, trying to put too much on his shoulder. Right, he's only, he's only, he's only taken six shots a game in his last three games. He's taken three already. And made two of them. Baseline answered by Eric Chenoweth. Good ball movement by Kansas. Good screening, got him too low. Kendra's got to force him out further, get him out about eight or 10 feet so he can't take that easy turnaround jumper. Tempo has slowed a bit now. Monty Mack. Boy, that's a tough shot. Spinning off, coming backwards and to your left. Bradford athletically takes it the other way. That's what happens when you take tough shots and get easy rebounds, they're off the race. So Kansas back to within three. Kirkland tried to force it inside and it's turned over again. Three on two if they hurry. And Bradford again at the finish. And now the timeout has to be called by UMass. UMass with a good start, 15-14. Now the score is Kansas came back and took advantage of turnovers. Beautiful execution by the freshman, Boucher. Three on two, looked one way, went the other, easy layup. Second timeout called by UMass as Kansas answers the 7 0 run with a 5 0 run of their own. Bruiser, a lot of new players in the game. He has tried everything this year. He was pretty critical of his team early on, John, and then after that, he said he just told his guys he loved them. The peanut. Turns real, it over. Real smart move by Kansas. New point guard came out in the half court trap. Well, step aside as UMass tries to regroup after a pretty good start. This is Payne Weber, college basketball. Weber. Thank you, Payne Weber, for the advice. Toyota, every day belongs to you. Make it count. Bud Light, for the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. State Farm Insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And Roy Williams bringing his Kansas Jayhawks into Amherst for the first time in school history. Roy Williams and Bruiser Flint. The two head coaches going head-to-head -to -head today. Field goal shooting very good for UMass. They missed a few shots and then have once again gone on a run. Kansas with a little smaller, much quicker ball club in there right now. Maybe going to pick up some pressure defensively, do a little trapping, try to get this into a 90-foot game. Lester Earl picks up the foul for Kansas. Team fouls are two apiece. 13 and a half minutes remain. UMass leads by Big one. Half court press wide open. You got to drop back. Q just forgot to drop back. That was too easy. Kitwana Reimer. Weak side has to drop back immediately when that trap occurs. TJ Pugh in the lineup now. As is Lester Earl. He gives Kansas a real physical presence down low. London. Fable defensively on him. 13 on the shot clock. Bochi. 
Pushed up top by Defina. Four to shoot. Bochy lays it in. Freshman comes up big. Anytime the clock's running down, they're going to get his hand, spread the floor, let him penetrate, try to dish it off for the jumper. But if they don't collapse, he took it all away. Now to the corner. Baseline, Mack, double team. Off of Robertson. Oh, he says and it then, it went, yeah, Mac, then it yeah. went off of Mack. I couldn't tell if it hit Mack in the leg or not, but certainly the official says it does, and it's turned over again. Mack didn't seem to complain, but... Fifth turnover by UMass. Holding underneath and away from the basketball. A lot of gamesmanship going on in the paint. Let's take a look at that trap that Kansas had. Now, if you look, you're going to trap the guys right here and right here as he comes across. You want to trap him using the half court and the out of bounds as defense. But what you got to do is you got to, the, the weak side guy, Pew, on the other side, must drop back and cover this man right here. See, Pew's coming up way too late. He's got to drop back much more quickly. Reimer picked up the foul after having the jam on that play. And turned Good over hand. by Kansas. Quick hand. Good hands by Clark. He's got 13 steals. I consider that a steal. I know they don't give him one, but he knocks the ball away off the other guy's hands out of bounds. That should be a steal. The turnover is going let's both make ways. That a steal here. It us. is a steal today. High pick and roll now to spread the floor out a little bit for Clark to penetrate. After his steal. And Mack lays it in. Very nice job. Spread the floor out. A lot of room to work. Weak side defense has to come and pick him up. That's uh, Max guy. Boom, he's hitting it. Good half-court execution so far by UMass. Les Guerrero just back a couple of games after the knee injury. It's been a nice presence for the Jayhawks. Mack has the hot hand. Tough shot. Yeah, a little too quick, maybe. No Kent harm done. Got it back. Though. Yep. Kentner gets it to Clark now. That's the guy you want. It. You want him handling it. Same play again. They're going to run now. They're going to bring Kirkland out high. Spread the floor out. This time back to Kirkland. Double team again applied on Kirkland. Ryan Robertson, the senior from St. Charles to London. Babel came back defensively. Very, very nice job by the senior Robertson on the break there. He knew there was a trailer coming. He waited and waited very patiently. Got the lane to the basket for the shot. Very nice job. A lot of younger people would have rushed that play, you know, trying to penetrate, trying to make things happen, but he knew he had numbers. One of the two returning starters, Robertson and T.J. Pugh, has come off the bench a lot this year, but Robertson, truly the senior leader of this team. Marlon London at the line. London, 73% free throw shooter. Good production the other night against Missouri with 10 points and 7 rebounds in just 19 minutes of play. A freshman splits them at the line and Kentner gets the rebound. Two-point game. All right, what Bruiser Flint wants them to do, take the time and execute. They collapse on Kentner. Still a good shot, though. Good down low shot. Nice soft. At least he's taking his shot today. Right. But, you know, if you do execute right, you get good shots. You keep taking, they're going to fall. Robertson himself. Yeah, that was, I didn't have a shot yet shot. Robertson hadn't had a shot yet today, so he was going to get one up. I think Roy needs to get him a shot. I think he needs to run his favorite play and get him an open jump shot, get him off the snide. Clark, the senior from the Bronx. Matt trying to curl through a screen, and Robertson was right there defensively. Now 10 to shoot. Clark again. And a reach in by London. Same play again. They're bringing him out, spreading the floor, making Kansas help from the weak side, and that's where they got Mack for the shot. Timeout on the floor. UMass leading Kansas 19-17. to This is Payne Weber, college basketball on ABC. Ball. Continue.
continues with great regional action in the SEC. The sixth-ranked Kentucky Wildcats battle the Ole Miss Rebels, or in the Atlantic 10 Conference, the Rhode Island Rams meet the Temple Owls. Check your local listings for the game in your area. Mike Goldberg, John Mengel, happy to be with you after a long travel day, which saw Kansas practice in Philadelphia at the 76ers facility, then take a six-hour bus ride here, and Mac doesn't care about any of that. He's going to take it to the hole again. Nice job by Mac Penetrain. They caused the switch. Let's look at that high screen play they're looking now. Here comes the screen right here. What they're trying to do is force the weak side defense right there to come over and pick up. Now, nothing happened there, but you're going to see that play over and over and over again. They spread the floor out, leave one guy on the other side, and they want that guy to pick up the guard penetrator. Robertson fouled him as substitutions being made on the floor. UMass checks back in with Chris Kirkland, and Kitwana Reimer sits down. Mack off to a great start. He has 12 points in the game, 5 of 7 from the field. And he's a 90% free throw shooter, so you know whose hands you want the ball at the end of the game. He and Robertson, two of the better free throw shooters in the nation. I think, I think Kansas has got to get Robertson off the side here. It's tough to play the rest of your game if you don't get a shot once in a while, get a good one and make one. Kentner teed up pretty well on Chenoweth that time. Just haven't gone head-to-head -to -head too much yet, John. At least in the primary focus. Here it is on the other side. Kentner pushes it back out. Clark wide open. Good shot, though. Remember, the ball coming out like that, it's easier to get a shot. They're dubbing Kentner down low. Here's Robertson. Tried to get him one there, just didn't get it. Had a double screen for him. Chenoweth again. Kentner is in Chenoweth's face. And Eric has missed the last two shots. Chenoweth looks a little impatient with the ball, a little quick on the shot. Needs to get better position, make a quick move, put it on the floor, and use his strength and his height. This is an important game for UMass, an important game for Larry Kentner to perhaps start believing in himself again as much right. as anything else. Here comes that play. Kirkland just inside the arc, and it rips in. See, if they don't switch, or if they do switch, and the other guy stays with Clark on the other, Mack on the other side, then Kirkland's open. So they really, they've run that play ten times, I'll bet, so far, and converted five one way or another. And pushed it back to a seven-point lead. Kirkland and Mack offensively so far for UMass. Chenoweth long range. Nice pick and roll, double team. On Robertson that time, left Chenoweth wide open, and he can put that 15-footer down. Six points for Eric Chenoweth. Crowd trying to be as active as they can here today at the Mullen Center. Bruiser has his guys playing patiently. Until Mack tried to force that one up. He thought he was fouled. Play continues. I'm trying to figure out how you get in there alone. Robertson called the timeout. He'll take a 20 he second. to the ground. He'll take a 20 second. I, I don't know. I guess in the first half, that's okay to kind of waste a 20 second on that. But in the second half, I don't know. Let's look at that high screen play again because we're going to see it a lot today. We're going to see UMass run and run and run because they're successful. And why, why not quit? Why quit running when you're successful? But they're going to run that, and I'm sure uh, Williams will talk about it at halftime. Let's look at it from up high now. And maybe we'll stop it here. The screen will come over right here. There you see Matt going over down to the corner over here. He's right here. He's going to go down to the corner. You'll see the screen come up. Now let's stop it right there if we can, okay? Now either what has to happen, you have to have a switch here or help from Max guy. If you get help from Max guy, he's just going down there. All right, now why don't we continue running it now? Now see, now both guys go over to the dribbler, leaving Kirkland wide open. Beautiful execution, and they've done it 10 times and gotten five or six hoop off it, and they're gonna keep doing it until Roy Williams adjusts. So after the 22nd timeout, seven and a half remains in the first half. Kentner 
Picks it up underneath. That is the second personal foul on Larry Kentner. There's a little, he is a little prone to getting fouls down on. That didn't look like a, a really tough foul there. The battle beginning between the big men. Will that be a sidebar story throughout the afternoon? Stick around. This is Payne Weber College Basketball. Little guy glad to be back inside with dad, away from the cold. Payne Weber believes that the best investment is an investment in education. Today they salute Ryan Robertson as the scholar athlete of the game and congratulate him on his own investment in the future. Payne Weber recognizes that commitment to education with a $1,000 donation to the University of Kansas for ongoing research. Payne Weber, you can't lose with an investment in the future. Robertson also one of the 30 Wooden Award finalists. There's the story, the points in the paint. We said it would be a story throughout the afternoon. Who could dominate down low? Kentner would like to use Kansas as his own form of antibiotics, as Roy Williams said earlier. Held ball, possession arrow, points the way of the Minutemen. Of course, it's been that way for many years, as Roy said. Everybody sees Kansas on their schedule, <laughs> and things have gone so badly for UMass so far, but if they beat Kansas, yeah. all of a sudden, everything seems to disappear. It's their first tournament game. If you look at it, I mean, they got a chance to really catapult themselves into the second half of the season, and they got to make a run, and what better catalyst could you use than a big victory over Kansas, a ranked team? I mean, it's, it's a must for them. Bruiser kind of, like I said earlier, he was pretty harsh on his guys earlier, and then he said, you know what, they just need to start feeling good about themselves again. Yeah. Roy That's Williams, what he's trying to do. Roy Williams, a little delay here. Roy Williams didn't like that call, and I, I'm not sure I agree with it either. Ball never was clamped or jumbo. It was just kicked away. Boucher got it back. It should have been a no call. Goes the way of the minute, men. Max, he has been the hot hand along with Chris Kirkland thus far for you, Max. Offensive rebound here and there for UMass. UMass got a lot of offensive rebounds, but they haven't put them back up for points. Right. They've been kind of long ones. They bring it back out, start running the offense. And the call on Robertson. Yeah, good call there. Especially when a guy's trying to penetrate, if you're holding, pushing off, keep him from going to the basket. That's, that's definitely a foul. The second on Ryan Robertson. Team fouls are five apiece. Pretty clean half when you look at it, you know? And another yeah, one. As soon as I say that, you get two fouls and the clock doesn't yep. tick. Nick Bradford picks that one up. 12 points for Monty Mack thus far. Uh, UMass is executing their half-court offense extremely well, and obviously they look to him. And you said, obviously, UMass wants a game in the 60s. Roy Williams wanted a game in the 80s or the 90s. It's probably not going to happen. Yeah, and Roy Williams looked at it and put Kenny Gregory on Mac also. Babel, tough shot, and it goes. Very tough shot. Let's watch that matchup close. Gregory on Mac. See if he can calm him down. A little bigger, good athlete. Kansas' the best defensive player. all season long despite their struggles has played some tenacious defense that's probably a pretty good foul right there because yeah, I thought that the big guy Chenoweth had easy layup foul now you take it out on his side Let's take a look as Kansas comes down kind of on a semi break rotating the ball down low to Gregory good athletic move but there Chenoweth ready to go back up easy hoop and he's fouled now you take it out as long as you're not in foul trouble, it's, you know, it's a good foul. Get Wanda Reimer plays limited minutes anyhow. That's his second. Ryan Robertson still without a real good look at the basket. Bochy trying to work it off the screen. Robertson's underneath. Johnson. Robertson yeah, this time trying to bang in. Yep. Over the top. Right now, Kansas is having a tough time getting their half-court offense to work. Of course, 
UMass known for its tenacious defense. Really good pressure by UMass. Forcing him out. Just see, he's just outside. He want, Gregory should want to be down on the block, almost in the lane when he gets that ball. That'll put him closer and get a better shot. There, of course, is the foul, but UMass doing a nice job of pushing Kansas out further on the floor right now. Ajmal Bassett misses the top half of the one and one. Both teams will be in the bonus now. Shoot the one and one. Robertson can't hang on. A little bit behind him. Robertson's struggling. You know, as a guy who, you know, averages, you know, 13, 14 points a game, I mean, when you don't get that first hoop, you don't get that first shot, it really makes it tough to kind of get into the rest of your game. UMass now in the bonus, of course. One more foul, Kansas will go to the line, too. Fable, boxed out by Robertson. UMass retains possession nonetheless. UMass has pretty much stayed in the man-to-man, -man, haven't they, John? Absolutely, except for making a, a switch uh, a while ago where they put Gregory on Mack. Now Gregory's back on Kirkland, but switched on Mack there on the uh, out-of-bounds play. Clark, I mean. So Kansas does a lot of switching defensively, which can cause mismatches down low. To the corner, Monty Mack knifing his way through. And Chenoweth went up high, got the rebound over the backside of Bassett. Bochi opened the game with a three-pointer. And again, a violation in the paint. Yeah, exactly. As soon as Kentner went out of the game, Roy Williams wanted him to go down low to Chenoweth. Knows he's got a mismatch with Bassett, and uh, he's going to pound it down low and try to get him in foul trouble and get Chenoweth to the line. And uh, he's not a bad free throw shooter for a seven-footer, 75%. He was plagued by foul trouble in the strong victory against Missouri the other night, the seven-footer from Villa Park, California. Still ended up with 13 rebounds in about 23 minutes. Just didn't have a good shooting night. Four Jayhawk players averaging in double figures. Chenoweth with a pair of sevens already looking for his eighth point to go along with seven rebounds from the line. So he stands at seven and seven and another push underneath. And they'll walk it down the other way. That one on Johnson, he's uh, been injured most of the year, so this is really his first action. So he'll be a little rusty. Drew the foul on the offensive rebound. One of the things that, that's interesting about Kansas, of course, you know, they lost uh, two, you know, really great players on uh, LaFrance and Pierce. And you've got a lot of new players. And then you got some veterans who are kind of playing a different position. You know, Robertson was kind of the point guard. And now he's not anymore. He's an off guard. So having new players and guys out of position, uh, you don't quite play as aggressively. And I think you'll see Kansas gain aggressiveness as the season goes. Gregory aggressively moves to the hole, though, one-on-one. -on -one. Kenny Gregory, his first field goal of the contest. He's been a guy who has been slumping recently. Sophomore jinx, huh, maybe? Likes to play in the non-conference games, it would seem. He's been better in the non-conference schedule than he has in the conference schedule. Kansas basketball. It's interesting what you said about the Jayhawks. I mean, you lose LaFrent, Pierce, and Billy Thomas, a great three-point shooter who made everyone be honest with their perimeter defense. You would think Kansas would struggle, I suppose, 12-3 and three and 4-0 and in the conference. So something might be a struggle if you're Kansas. Yeah, this is a team that's 110 and 14 their last four years. I mean, it's a great program in the 90s. It's always been a great program, and you're going to continue to have good kids. And these kids just had to wait their turn, you know, to come. He had such a great team last year. 30-plus victories the last couple of seasons. This guy's been there a decade already. Roy Williams in his 11th season. What an impressive record. That's the top winning percentage amongst active Division I college basketball coaches. 82% nearly. Mack with the foot. They'll reset the 35. I'll tell you what's amazing to me. They're 40 and 2 in the Big 12 the last three years. Now, you know, when you get in conference games and you get on a road, it's tough. And to have that kind of composure and that kind of club that continues to win on the road is really something. That's, there's a lot to be said about preparation. UMass hasn't been bad in this decade. Canby Rowe, Dante Bright, 
Oh, good execution. Nice screen. Okay. Very well done. Easily into Ashanti Johnson, his first field goal of the year. As you said, he's been out with an injury all season long. UMass, 11th best in the decade of the 90s. Trying to regroup from a slow start here against Kansas. Turned over again. Teams have combined for nearly 20 turnovers here in the first half. Under four minutes remain. Chenoweth, he says, hey, you're not going to come out? I'll push it down. Oh, yeah, he can do that. I mean, it's a free throw for him. Nine points. And a Kansas 7-0 run to tie the game at 26. I've seen UMass run that high screen in a while. I mean, they were getting a lot off that. I think they need to do that again. <laughs> Council basket, yep, and then the foul will go offensively. I'm going to get in trouble here. Worst rule in college basketball right there. You know, how can you charge and get a count basket? I mean, it's one way or the other, and I, I still believe uh, that it's a way for the officials to burn out. I mean, I, you know, I just don't understand that rule. Basket and the foul, but on the same man that time. Right, I mean, the rule is if the ball is out of the shooter's hands, okay, before he hits somebody, the basket's good, but you know if, you, if you're not out of control, <laughs> you, you don't get the shot. So I, I, I just disagree with that rule. Gregory will be the man to go to the line. Well short on that effort. Not a very good free throw oh, shooter. Almost missed it all. <laughs> yeah. Forty-two percent. Two-point UMass lead. Mac has it. Defended by Robertson. Looking up top. Babel couldn't bring it in. Set play for the lob on the back side. They were trying to catch Kansas helping on the post up. Didn't do it. They stayed at home. Babel sits down. Timeout on the floor. Kansas trails by a deuce. 2.59 remains. The change is forever. Toyota, get the most out of your day, every day. UMass has narrowed the gap each time these teams have met. As we said at the top of the show, Kansas 3-0. and oh. This is the fourth meeting in six years. The second on-campus meeting after UMass almost snapped the home streak one year ago at Allen Fieldhouse. Field goal percentage has come down a bit for the Minutemen, but still at a strong 50%. The freshman, Marlon London, gets his first field goal of the game. Tied again at 28. Again, UMass has not run that high pick and roll for a long time. The Kansas making adjustments, take it away at all? No, that, well, Kirkman, uh, the last two times, got two shots, good shots, made one of them and got fouled on the other. So, I, you know, I just uh, use it until it, uh, they take it away from you. I'm sure Roy Williams will talk about it and make some adjustments at halftime. Kansas trying to press here and trap a little bit. They won't press full court very no, often. They don't want to do that. To just go with the half court. There it was right there. There was the play. No switch, and he got a layup. Kirkland with the follow. Another thing that does is create a lot of movement back there, giving you a chance for the offensive rebound. Number of offensive rebounds for the Minutemen. Reimer reached in and fouled as the pass came in. Boy, Poo did a great job that time getting positioned down low, holding him off. Otto Bytel, halftime coming up. The halftime report with John Saunders, scores and highlights from games around the nation, a preview of ABC's second game of today's doubleheader. That's the Otto Vitel halftime report with John Saunders. Got to keep me informed about that Auburn-Florida score. One-point game at halftime. I know. Auburn, of course, one of two undefeated teams in the country. Uh, runs up against Kentucky on Wednesday night for a big SEC clash. Hugh misses. TJ, a guy who has played through a plethora of injuries, not just this season, but throughout his career. 
inspirational player for the Jayhawks. Bassett. Kendrick's been on the bench for quite some time. Yeah, I think he's going to keep him out the whole half. He'll want him in a second. Especially unless Kansas made some kind of run, he wasn't going to bring him back in as foul prone as he is. Didn't want him picking up his third. That's a tough shot with six to shoot. Offensive rebound again, and UMass cannot take advantage of it. They're really banging the boards, though. Now here's where Kansas, I think, is dangerous, although they didn't get anything at times. Kind of on the semi-fast break. You don't have the easy hoop. They have a tendency to be able to find people. Robertson for three. Yes. That's what he needs, I think, to get off the schneid a little bit. Never really had an open jumper, and he liked that. Max tries to answer. Good shot, just didn't get it. Our small Bassett gets the offensive rebound. Again, UMass doing a nice job of running their offense. The semi-break, getting offensive rebounds. That's how you get them. Movement on the offense will get your offensive rebound. Bradford, London, Hugh and Robertson on the floor with Lester Earl. 15 to shoot, 23 and a half, and the whistle may have bailed the Jayhawks out. Today at 5 o'clock Eastern, 2 o'clock Pacific on ABC Sports. It's the third annual Winter X Games from Crested Butte, Colorado. You'll see great action from the men's snowboarding border cross finals and don't miss the first ever free skiing skier big air finals featuring olympic gold medalist johnny mosley it's the x games on abc earl from the line gets the first basket as i said picks up the foul he has really made a difference coming back after that knee surgery and rims the second one in Earl, uh, only a 50% yeah, free throw shooter. It's both of them. It'll be interesting if this game's down close at the end. Neither of these teams great free throw shooting. Of course, UMass only 58%. Kansas at 65. However, interesting, as you pointed out a while ago, you've got two of the best in the country, Mack at 90, and, and Robertson, an excellent free throw shooter also. 93% has missed only three all year long. Here's Clark. Up in time, but well short for Bassett. Impatient, but got it up. Should have had plenty of time to put it on the floor, take it up strong, and send the big guy shot a fadeaway. So Roy Williams' team has weathered the bad travel day and come away after the first half with a three-point lead over the Minutemen of UMass. Don't forget, after this commercial timeout, John Saunders back in our studio in New York with the Auto by Tell Halftime Report. We'll step aside after these local messages and a word from our ABC station.
So they didn't really, you know, get much of an advantage out of those offensive rebounds. The Reese's not righteous first half stats. Kansas. Interesting game. It looked like to me they didn't want Robertson to get a, a shot and get him off. They double teamed him a lot. That leaves the big guy open for the jumper. And bingo, he can hit from out there. Good shooter, Chenoweth from deep. Now, the bread and butter play for UMass was this high screen. Now, this is a little bit different. Usually we were going to Mac in the corner over here for a shot, but they bring Babul around the pick. Now, the, the, the activity down low is what allows Mac to be open. This time, Babul got it open in the middle, up off the glass. That has really been a play that has done well for UMass, and I'll tell you, I'd keep running that thing until they stopped it. I'm sure Roy Williams talked about it at halftime. Monty Mack, a strong first half, although he was only one of five from three-point range and seven rebounds to go along with the nine points for Eric Chenoweth. Robertson, as you mentioned, a bit quiet with just five points. But he, he played shot. the entire first half. Yeah, they, yeah, that must have been in the game plan. Yeah, he did not get shots. They didn't want him getting off. Uh, maybe they watch him a lot and knows when he does get off scoring-wise, everything else, uh, every other part of his game increases. I think it's important, again, that, that UMass get off good. The crowd was real quiet at the end of the half. They really weren't in it. They need them back in it here. Bruiser's team yet to win when trailing at the intermission. Kentner in immediately. I know it's a little bit of a hurry there. A yep. yep. little bit of a hurry. Take your time. You had good position. Bochy and thrown down by Chenoweth. Yeah, Kentner gambled on the high side. Nice pass by Bushy, leading him. There was no defense over there. That's why he threw the ball over there. That way he knew immediately to go to the basket. UMass big man missed. Kansas big man made it. UMass big man answered. Right, and he took more time that time. You saw him. Two, a dribble, couple moves, and up. Strong move. As he started the game, Bochy from three. Eight points for Jeff Bochy, the freshman. You notice that wasn't off a set half court. That's, again, a little bit of a semi-break. People are still looking for their defensive assignments. No help. Chenoweth will pick up the personal foul. That is his second. Kansas foul on number 44, Eric Chenoweth. Yeah, here comes this the play here. Genoa really had good position. Now, you see where the ball was thrown? Over to his left hand because there was no weak side help. So he threw it to his left hand. That's a sign to the big guy that there's nobody there and that you can go to the basket. One of those non-spoken signs on the floor. Babel bounces it out. Clark and Mack up at the perimeter. Mack spins it now to Kirkland. Plenty of time left on the clock. You missed wants to take their time. Max Clark, three. Chenoweth with another board. Robertson almost lost it. Got it back out to Bochy. Looked like he wanted to shoot it, and Clark got his hand on it. Clark has been very active, although he's been bothered by chronic tendonitis in both knees. Still very active defensively today. Yet to score a point, though. Baseline battle, bodied up by Babel. Charlton Clark. He's pretty good handling the offense, although the offense has struggled. Well, they're going down low to Kenner every time. On general, we're trying to build his confidence. Yeah, Clark does handle the ball well. He's got like almost a two and a half assist or a turnover ratio. Good block. Oh, big block by Kentner. Well, here's the battle we thought may precipitate in our game. Kirkland had it stripped away, but he was fouled. Nope, went off the Kansas player's hip, and the ball rolled out of bounds. No foul on the yeah, play. That pass didn't quite get there quick enough, did it? Kind of hung too long. I think a nice crisp pass would have gotten him a layup. But this battle of the big men starting to, you know, establish itself here. Yep. You know, UMass has gone to Kentner every time except this time. And Mack missed. Kirkland oh! high for the rebound. And again. And never could he draw the foul. Kentner with the foul. -off. Again, no conversions. Looked a little bit impatient, a little bit of in a hurry. Chenoweth to Bochy. A little quick on that one. Good perimeter defense right in Bochy's face. 
I think he had to drive that time with a little head fake. He had the whole lane open. The whole uh, left side of the floor was open. Comes a high screen play. Now watch, see what they run off of it. See, no switch, no help from Robertson because he didn't want Mack to have the jumper. That's open every time. No adjustments from Kansas. So Clark kept it himself. Got his first field goal of the game. Chenoweth, the big man. Robertson trying to fight for the rebound off the hands of Nick Bradford and out of bounds. Kentner a moment ago showing his presence defensively. He's got two fouls now. He, he kept him out early in the late in the first half because he didn't want to get in foul trouble. Good lob pass. Good quick hands. Kentner on the block. That's a risky move there at this point in the game. Larry just has not handled the pressures of supposedly having to carry this team all season long very well. Here comes so the Mac crowd today. I'll go ahead and take control. 16 points for Monty Mack. Get this sellout crowd back into it. The crowd, after battling the weather, has all filed in, and they are becoming vocal. There's little spikes on your tires out there today. Now, we talked about it just briefly. I mean, Kansas had to go to Philadelphia, practice there, didn't get here till 10 or 11 o'clock last night. The three-pointer, great ball movement, one extra pass. Really, really nice job by UMass again. Not off a set offense, not off a fast break, but kind of the semi-break when defensive guys are still trying to find their offensive uh, assignments. A great time to get good shots. Reimer picked up the foul, John, so he sits down with four. Chenoweth turns it over. A double team, the big seven-footer. 7-0 seven UMass run to regain the lead. High pick again. Again, wide open in the middle. You know, I think that Kansas has to force him back left. Force him back to where there's help over there because you got two guys down low. Chenoweth quickly. Robertson couldn't get the rebound. I'd come down and run it again. I didn't have a shot. I'd run it until he stopped it. That's what they're going to do. Uh, they broke it down by forcing him back left that time. That time Robertson adjusted, but still Clark able to draw the foul. Keep going to the well if it keeps on working. This is the time before. Here's the screen out here. Now you got activity down low. One head runner. Here's the screen high. Now you're looking for the guy in the corner, which is Mac. Robertson late getting over, tried to get the charge. You're never going to get it in there. I think they have to force him back left, one to his weak hand, and two to help. Because then you can trap him down in the corner, at least get the ball out of his hands and get into a big guy's hands. Charlton, a 71% free throw shooter. Kirkland sits down. Kentner is in. Clark just had a streak of 71 consecutive starts come to an end because of that tendonitis in both knees that I talked about a moment ago. Missed them both. Kentner tips it right back into the hands of his teammate, though. Try to get to the old-fashioned way. Same play. Here we go again. And another offensive rebound. Now see, Clark's getting a little too intense. Mack was open in the corner that time. He's trying to do too much himself now. Robertson's all the way over in the middle helping. Mack's open. Boom. There it is. Bingo. Missed it. Clark back up. Yes. And the foul. Oh, my. Take a look at that play again. Same play. Now Robertson's all the way over this time. Wide open shot. Max hit a lot of those. Clark on the rebound. Up and back in. He's into it. I, I actually think Kansas is going to have to go to a zone just to get him out of that play. Ryan Robertson tried to draw the charge twice. Neither time successful. 
as Charleston Clark caps off the three-point play. UMass leads by six. This is Payne Weber College basketball on ABC. need it you survive it mass mutual the blue chip company we help you keep your promises nissan who reminds you that life is a journey enjoy the ride umass hasn't won two straight games all season long with that record of six and eight they're coming off one of their best shooting nights and their 69-55 win here at home against duquesne on wednesday they are on a run with good shooting here to open the second half. 12-0 run in the last three minutes and seven seconds. Bochy and London in the backcourt to try to quiet the crowd. Mm. Marlon London, the freshman. Sweet shot. No pressure on him, right? Not any. First of all, he plays the Kansas. That brings with it a bit right there. You got three guards in the game right now. And I'm sure Roy Williams talked about that play in the huddle, see? Nice, nice gives it away neatly. Yep. Bochy caps it off. Yeah, you got to get the ball out of Clark's hands. You got to double team him or force him left. Get it out of his hands and keep it on the left side of the floor. That was the first time in about 15 times that play didn't work. Well, that dead ball timeout helped the Jayhawks, didn't it, partner? Come out, get two quick baskets. Take the crowd out of it momentarily. Another offensive board up again and strong. Basket. Now. Oh, good basket. Brother John plays at Georgia Tech. John from battling injury. Mike doing a great job showing his athleticism there. Robertson, wide open underneath. Chenoweth tries to get the rebound. Basketball remains with Kansas. Well, time for our Aflac trivia question. Six years ago today, Kansas registered its 1500th win. Who did they beat? We'll give you the answer later on. Our Aflac trivia question. You know, Bass and Kenton are really bouncing channel worth around on the boards. They're kind of sandwiching him, really putting a lot of hurt on it. Robertson, the leader. Uh, of course. That was, I haven't had a shot this half. Look at that. Plus 12 on the offensive glass. They have used the offensive rebounds much more efficiently in the second half than they did the first. A little bit different look offensively as Kansas shut down that high pick play. They didn't shut down that. Ten points for Kentner. Different yeah. man this half. Yeah. Big, big afternoon opportunity for Kentner to gain his confidence again. Now he's there defensively. Got to be careful. Steps on the baseline. Force the turnover. Traveling violation is actually going to be the call. Good job done by Larry Kentner. I just, he says, I just changed pivot feet. What the heck? Well, Larry said it's been tough hearing throughout this season. This team will go as Larry goes. And he just hasn't handled the pressure very well. That's what Bruiser Flint said to us before today's game. Confident. His teammates finally said, hey, we got guys like Monty Mack on the perimeter and others to help you out, Larry. You don't have to take us to every bit of the promised land. Robertson, Celeste Ray. Oh. And again, Kansas can't convert. Great look by Robertson and Earl blew the layup. Kansas uh, not quite responding to that 12-0 uh, run as well as I thought they would. They trail by six. Kirkland, the leaner. UMass really playing aggressive. All of them as individuals and as a team. They always play good, strong, aggressive defense. But in this half, they're offensively aggressive. Kansas ranked 15th in the nation off to a 4-0 start in the Big 12. Three losses on the season, including a home loss to Iowa. London off the dribble. Robertson, the offensive rebound. Back out, Bochy, three. Way off. 
almost an air ball. Huh? And he's just shaking his head. They're on their feet here at the Mullen Center. Oh, nice pass. He's out of bounds. Can't be the first guy back in to get the ball. Official timeout on the floor. The Minutemen trying to pull off the upset here at home. They lead by eight. This is Payne Weber, college basketball. Hopefully uh, get some better rebounds. Chenoweth on the bench. Babel with 10 rebounds. There he is defensively. And he goes right over the top. This Kenny Gregory of Mike Babel's defense. He's known as the defensive stopper on this team. Yeah, that was good execution. That was a double screen from the weak side down low. You got to switch up on that. There's no hope for the guy coming through that. It's too quick a pass, too easy a shot. Last ranked opponent that UMass defeated with the Xavier Musketeers, the game played last year. Kansas out with a different look, a zone defense. Babel very short. Robertson made sure that he got the back. Can't get much back shorter net. Yeah, no. Kansas with the zone that time. I don't know if it's a one-time thing or Roy's going to go to that because Chenna was not in the game. London. Let's get it to Gregory. Robertson gets the three-point field goal. That's his second of the game. And that's only the second look he's had. Good defense on him. Just eight points for Ryan Robertson. Can't he's still in the zone. And it's not the points, as you said. It's the looks and shots yeah. that he's not getting. Kentner, double team. Shooting foul. Now, such great success here in the decade of the 90s, of course, for the Kansas Jayhawks and their head coach, Roy Williams. The answer to our AFLAC trivia question six years ago today, Kansas registered their 1500th win. They beat the Louisville Cardinals 98 to 77, January 16, 1993. The other AFLAC question is Will UMass hit enough free throws to win this game? Now they have been very, very poor from the line 58%. Dead last in the Atlantic 10 Conference so far this season. They only had three looks from the line in the first half of play. Well, you know, if, if, if Kansas behind, they're going to foul at the end of the game, so you, you better have some people in there can shoot free throws. Here's London baseline. Lester Earl, limited minutes here. Just two points, both from the line. Five to shoot. Over the top, offensive rebound by Lester. Here is Robertson. Now, Robertson in this setup is a point guard. He's taking over the point guard position. Body tightly by Charlton Clark. Short arming it with TJ Pugh. Kansas was patient there, but still they're unable to find a field goal. Back into a man-to-man, -man, Kansas is. Let's see if they run that high post offense. Monty Mack, Babel, Kentner, Kirkland, and Clark on the floor. Kentner waited patiently, and it ended up being an easy one. Looked like he took the ball and just pushed Pew down. He was unhurt from the other night with five points and four rebounds. Much better here this evening with 13 points. This is the kind of play that they expected from Larry Kentner, night in and night out. But to be a great player, you got to do it consistently. Robertson baseline. Picked up the foul, count the bucket. I believe. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And Robertson, see, has gotten a couple of easy, pretty good shots here as the point guard. Something that he was familiar with last year. Or you take a look at him. He likes to handle the ball. Not a great screen. He still gets double teamed, as we said. Felt the pressure on the arm from Kirkland. You know, the smart player automatically goes up. You got the foul. You might as well go up and try to shoot it. Got the hoops. Got a chance for a three-point play. He leads the nation in free throw shooting. He probably just jinxed it. Missed three all year. Everybody else is 
tried to jinx him. I couldn't do it either. Caps off the three-point play. Two three-pointers for him in a row. One beyond the three-point range. And, of course, you can still get him three-pointers by getting fouled going to the basket. And now we have a three-point game. Clark, baseline. Kansas back in the zone that time, so they're changing their defenses, trying to confuse UMass's offense. Kirkland shot way too strong. The senior Ryan Robertson bringing Kansas back into this basketball game. Three-point lead for UMass. This is Payne Weber, college basketball. listings for the game in your area follow abc's college basketball action online at america online keyword abc sports larry kettner a factor here today unlike he was a couple of nights ago when the minutemen were able to win against duquesne it's also very important he has picked up a foul this half so he has three fouls left here in the last uh, seven and a half minutes he can have he can be a little more physical underneath the basket both defensively and on the boards. He had those two early in the first half, too. Gregory. He, yeah, he missed half the first half. Oh, that's goal sending. Count it for Gregory. Kenny Gregory gets credit for the basket. Yep, can't get it off the glass. I wish I could have goaltended just once in my life. <laughs> what a neat feeling. The only way you're going to goaltend is to walk across this building and find the hockey rink, right? right. Kansas in a zone. They've, they've confused UMass just a little bit here in the last two or three minutes changing defenses they played the zone about three quarters of the time and going back to a man to man the other quarter so umass having a little difficult time adjusting from the corner yeah. not that time good ball movement monty mack for his second three-pointer of the game coming off a 19 point performance he had 19 last year in lawrence playing well again against the jayhawks down low earl Short armed it. And this time it's slapped away by Kentner. Second block of the second half. I was going to say, he's open in the corner. Again. Kentner all over himself. The offensive rebound. No. Chenoweth was there. Chenoweth from 18. Kansas getting frustrated. Nice move that time by Robertson, though. You got the shot you wanted. What he did is rub his man off Kentner. Use Kentner as a screen. New Chenoweth would be open at the free throw line. Here's Kentner's block. Earl open on a weak side. He blew one a while ago. That was a block first by Kirkland and then by Kentner. Earl can't get a break. Of course, he's just come back from injury, too. So he doesn't really have his legs yet. Kentner, one of three UMass players to record 70 blocks in one season. Harper Williams and... Marcus can be the other two. He's got 13 points today and a handful of blocks and rebounds to go along with that. Oh, that's a set play, and that will get everyone on their feet. Mike Babel. And turned over. Nice play. Got the zone to come out just a little bit. Let's take a look. Kind of lulled him to sleep. Look on the weak side. Kinder just cleared out. They really didn't do anything. Tricky, no back picks, no nothing. And Babul on a serious dunk. And it's only two, but the crowd got back into it again. It's going to be an important part of this game down in the end. I don't care what you say, a crowd like this really helps to play defense. Six points to go along with a career-high 10 rebounds for the man who has the basketball. Kansas still in the zone, even with Chenoweth back in the game. Babel Clark, Mack, working around the perimeter. Clark trying to lose Bochy. Kentner, five to shoot. Kirkland wide open. Babel with another rebound, his 11th. You know, some guys are just those guys who are always around the ball. Babel's one of those guys. He's not tall. 
Doesn't have long arms and not a super jumper, but he's just around the ball all the time. Eric Kentner trying to get a bit fancy there. Kansas comes up with it. Roy Williams motioning for his offense to get some movement going. He's talking to his freshman, Jeff Bochy. Right now, Robertson out for his first breather of this entire game. Mac picks up the foul away from the basketball. Second on him. Kansas with two freshman guards in the game. Let's see how they handle this pressure on the road. Dominance on the board by the Minutemen. at home in the Big 12 who have a chance to watch this game are thinking about Gregory a leaner good defense by Kentner came out to bother the jumper inside Marlin London Bradford that is the bump there um, the UMass defense though is not giving Kansas anything easy it's the third on Monty Mack Mike Babel. Let's take a look at this. Sitting Babel down. got his hand hurt here. Let's see if we can see how he did it. Well, a lot of bumping and bruising. Yeah, it looks yeah. like he already did it before, maybe when he hit the ball a minute ago. I think he jammed his thumb. Brand new shot clock. No, makes no difference. Bochi again Bochy for three. He's a heck of a freshman, isn't he? He is indeed. Drawn comparisons to Bobby Hurley, Steve Alford, Mark Price, two-time North Dakota Player of the Year, Jeff Bochy. From Valley City, North Dakota. Clark in traffic, rims in and out. The seven-footer brings it down. Three-point game. Kansas can cut it to one or tie it here. And they do. Whoa. Coming off a 15-point performance, a new career high for Jeff Bochy. Coming up big under pressure, just right off the semi-break again as Kansas has got a lot of points that way. 16 points for the freshman. Kentner spins back in. He is able to draw the contact. Can he hit the free throws? From three in the last three games, he has been absolutely spectacular. And as I mentioned, he has four again tonight. Those numbers include his performance from beyond the arc this afternoon here at the Mullen Center. I think it's imperative. As you see Kentner stand there, guy's got his hands on his knees like that. That's a sign of being a little, little winded, a little tired. Makes it even tougher to shoot free throws. Used it all there. Still... <laughs> Looks the same the next day. <laughs> Counts the same, too. That's exactly right. <laughs> you get 30 points, and nobody says, how many were swishers? <laughs> they just know you got 30. You know? <laughs> no pictures on the scorecard. I think that's a big statement right there for Kentner right here down to the end, toward the end of the game. This is Payne Weber College Basketball on ABC. <laughs> Marty's here. Let's see a fuel injector for a Ford Pro. A starter for a Saab. EGR valve for a 74 Gremlin. Ah! See you tomorrow, Marty. Pep boys. Cars like us. People love us. Thank you, Payne Weber, for the advice. Audi, creators of the A4, the A6, and the A8. Autobuytel.com, we're changing the way America buys cars. They have come closer each meeting UMass has to defeating the Kansas Jayhawks. In 93, they lost by 11. In 94, at the Wooden Classic, when they were number one ranked, they lost by six last year at Allen Fieldhouse. They lost by two. Now they lead by two. 
for how long, though? Kind of interesting that Ashanti Johnson would be in the ball game. Hasn't played much all year, but at crunch time in a big game, he's here. Hasn't played at all all season, John, with that injury. Today, the first time he's been on the court. Well, a little in the first half. Yep. You know, yeah, exactly. In the ball game. This is crunch time. That's a lot of pressure on a guy. Kirkland drives to the hole. Chris Kirkland, 10 points. And a four-point UMass lead. Two minutes, 24 seconds on the clock. I'm going to say, Boosie's hit two in a row. I try to get him the ball. Robertson, tough shot. And the timeout called by the Jayhawks. Probably, a, I don't know, I think he's going to go a full, full timeout. We will take it with them. Two-point game, UMass trying to pull off the upset here at home. This is Payne Weber, College Basketball on ABC Sports. Let's see, college in four years, costs up 40% over the next five. Somebody do the math here. It would be great Thanks. if our money would grow as fast as these kids. I can't believe it. Paying for college be as painful as this? Let's get ready. Hey, that kid just dropped a pretzel? Because I like pretzels. I really well, like We'll be able to help with our education. I wonder if we should have put that money in a trust. Maybe we would have... I hope she was kidding about college in Hawaii. Thank you, Payne Weber. Are you ready to make real noise? To the lineup instead of Ashanti Johnson. Here, here's the hoop. Nice move by Robertson, you know, to keep his patience. Roy called timeout. He had two 20s if he wanted to get a sub. I, you know, it's kind of interesting that he, he must think this is a huge transition right here and wanted to make sure the defense was exactly what he wanted, which is a 1-3-1 one, one half-court press. UMass with two full timeouts and two 20s remaining. Now back into a man-to-man. -man. I would think that... I would think UMass would want to run that high screen, but it doesn't look like they're going to run it. 15 they, to shoot now. They do have plenty of time to get into it if they want to. Bochy extending the defense. There it is, the high screen, but away from Matt. Kirkland, Robertson, good defense. And turned over. Bradford will slow things down. Bochy will run the play. Bochy, Bradford, Robertson, Chenoweth, and Marlon London, the freshman on the floor for the Jayhawks. Two freshman guards, and they got Robertson in forward. Shenoweth. Not quite the best angle for that bank shot. Here comes the 1-3-1 one, one press again. The trap right at the baseline. Bruiser Flint wants the timeout. It is a full timeout. Flint and UMass have the basketball. They lead by two. 103 remains on the clock. This is Payne Weber College Basketball. Let's see. College in four years costs up 40% over the next five. Somebody do the math here. It would be great if our money would grow as fast as these kids. I can't believe it. Will paying for college be as painful as this? Let's get ready. Hey, that kid just drop a pretzel? Because I like pretzels. I really well, like We'll be able to help with our education. I wonder if we should have put that money in a trust. Maybe we would have... I hope she was kidding about... Regional action between the Kentucky Wildcats and Ole Miss or an A-10 contest between Rhode Island and Temple. Check your local listings for the Payne Weber College basketball game on ABC in your area. This is where the chess game comes out. I think uh, Bruiser's plan has to figure out maybe what kind of defense Kansas is going to run. I got to go with the high pick play if I'm you, man. <laughs> And uh, they come out in a man-to-man. That just uh, has been so good to them. 103 on the game clock, 25 on the shot clock. UMass has lost a lot of close games this season, John. They're one in five in games decided by 10 points or less. And turnovers has been the culprit. 
Looks like the high pick play is going to be. Although they don't, they, they don't take enough patience in it. It's really too high. They got plenty of time to run it again if they want to. Seven on the shot clock. Now five. Kentner. Short. Rebound Kansas. Just didn't get a good now. shot. Yep, 37 on the game clock. 28 on the shot clock. Bochy lost it. Bochy the lost the handle. Now here comes the free throw shooting percentage. You got a foul. Wrong guy to foul. Yep, Bochi, the freshman, turned it over. 22nd timeout for Roy Williams. You had to foul in that position, but again, you got to be patient. You got to foul the right guy when the ball goes to Mac. You got to be aware of what's going on in the game, who's on the floor, who are the free throw shooters, who aren't. And at that time, uh, Kansas made a very big mistake. Time permitting, coming up after our game, the Buick post-game report with John Saunders back in our studios in New York. Now, Roy Williams with a 20-second timeout obviously has to go over all the scenarios with his team. If he makes one, if he makes two, if he doesn't make any, what to run because it'll be a two-point game, a three-point game. Whether or not to go for the three, or the two, depending on the score. So he had a lot of scenes to set, although there is a not going to be a free throw shooting here. There wasn't. I thought there was not a lot of free throws in the game tonight. Remember one year ago at Allen Fieldhouse in Lawrence, Kansas? UMass came as close. Truly, I mean that. The margin of victory was the smallest during any win of the home streak for Kansas in that game last year against the Minutemen of UMass. And the three big men who led Kansas to victory that night are all gone. Thomas Pierce and LaFrentz. They had on the board a while ago that it was a bonus, although it wasn't. So now it is the bonus. Clark at the free throw line, a 70% shooter. Still not the guy you want to foul. Shooting one and one. Clark, indeed, it is a one and one. He missed the top pass. Bochi will get another chance. Still a two-point game. And a foul. That's a disturbance foul right there. UMass has only five fouls as we stand here. Two things they may want to do. One is, you know, just kind of use up time on the clock. There's 13, 14 seconds. They got another two fouls to give, uh, one foul if they have to. So they may let the clock go down if a guy's going to the basket. Foul him, but you got to be very careful. The freshman, 4-3, way off the mark. And they walk it back up the floor. I think in that kind of circumstance, although it is a freshman, you've got to take the ball to the basket, only two down. So many things can happen. You get your two on a layup. You get fouled and maybe get three, or by going to the basket, you cause a lot of commotion and you may get a follow shot. That shot was just a little bit of inexperience shown by Boshi. 20 second timeout on the floor. Tough last 20 seconds for Jeff Boshi. The turnover and then the missed three point field goal attempt. Well, let's talk tournament for a second. UMass trying to get back in the good graces of the selection committee. This could be a big victory today if they hold on. They would go to seven and eight. Interesting to note in Bruiser Flint's first season, they opened six and nine, won 11 of their next 12, finished 19 and 14, made it to the East Regionals of the NCAA tournament. They've been to the field of 64 seven straight years, first Kalapari and now Bruiser Flint. I, I, you know, I think this is a, more of a confidence builder than a t tournament looker. I mean, they, they obviously got a lot of their conference games left. They'll have to do very well in the conference to get a look or win the conference tournament. But this is a huge conference, conference builder here if they can win this ballgame. They played very solid basketball here today. Clark just missed the top half of the one and one a moment ago. One for four from the line today. Three point lead. Kansas must 
go for the three. If he hits his free throw and I'm Bruiser Flynn, I, I may even call timeout just to really make sure I discuss everything with my team defensively, because then it's your game to lose. Four point UMass lead. Don't want to foul on a three-pointer here. Bochy fouled by Depina. He was going to foul him to use up time, but boy, you know, it's dangerous to do that when a guy can go up and shoot the three. That's what I was afraid of. Another 20-second timeout being utilized by the Jayhawks. They need a prayer answered now, though. Yeah, it's got to be. A, it's almost got to be a foul on a three-point shot, which, you know, I, I actually probably at this point don't even guard them above the three-point line. Just let them take their shot, because by the time it uh, goes in, uh, even if they do have a timeout, there's one or two seconds left, and they're going to foul you as you put the ball in play. So. The one, the only way you can lose this game is foul somebody on a three-point shot. Now, this was one of those games, and we kind of had a feeling with the, the problems that the team had coming up from Lawrence yesterday. Non-conference game, middle of January, UMass needing everything yeah, for their confidence to gain. Yeah. Kansas, nothing really to lose. Tough game emotionally for the Jayhawks. Robertson. Oh my, he was almost fouled. I think he was fouled. It anyway. I think he was fouled. I just, you know, it, it wouldn't have made a difference, but he still had a chance. They're storming the court here at the Mullen Center. UMass has upset Kansas. Here's the final play, and again, we said the only way you could lose is foul somebody. Here's Robertson over in the corner over here. Now watch him get bumped on a foul. Now, you know, it's no big deal because he missed the shot, but he could have hit him. So UMass wins by a final score of 64 to 60. Coming up next here on ABC Sports. Payne Weber College basketball continues. Kentucky, Ole Miss, or Rhode Island and Temple. Shot clock. 